Hey everybody, this is Rick, and today I'm going to review and give you a how-to guide on one of my favorite new games. It's new to me anyway. Uh, somebody on Twitter dropped us a line and told us we had to play this game, so I got it for my collection, and I'm absolutely 100% in love with it. This is a about a $13 game online. It's called The Resistance, and it's produced by Don uh, Eskridges. And um, it is a social game where you have to deduce logically who is a good guy and who is a spy. We'll get in more into it after a second. And thank you so much for watching. Uh, please subscribe to this channel. Like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Google Plus, as well as bookmarkletsloveluff.net for news. Um, again, the resistance. Check it out. So I wanted to tell you guys a little bit about the Resistance. So first off, my score. I first played the Resistance at Geek and Sundry's International Tabletop Day on recommendation from one of our Twitter followers at Let's Level Up. Um, we brought this game out um, kind of as a filler in between two other games, and we actually ended up playing it for the rest of the night, um, which doesn't happen to us very often. We were so in love with this game unanimously. We kept going, one game led into another, led into another, and before we had known it, we had played it for about five hours and gone through almost a dozen or so plays. Um, this is absolutely fantastic game. I would rate it. I don't like doing 10 out of 10s, um, and I can see where um, if you're not in the right group, things could be a little easier. Um, if you're in the right group, however, and you have some kind of deceivious friends like I do, um, this is the perfect game for that group. Um, it is extremely cheap. Just based on price alone, it's a 10. Um, I will say, however, we are going to go ahead and give it an official 9.5 out of 10. Um, it is so good. Um, you definitely should check it out. Um, see if your local game store has got a copy of The Resistance because it's well worth it. Now, to give you a walkthrough of the game, each player, and let me just find some cards really quick, each player will be dealt a roll at the beginning of the game. Um, and that role will let you know whether you're a member of the resistance or if you're a spy. Now, the uh, determination of the number of spies depends on what tableau you're using, and what tableau you're using is subsequently dependent on how many players you have. So, for instance, if you're playing with five players, there'll be two spies and three members of the resistance. Um, in each tableau, will tell you in the, in the bottom right side what members you play with. Um, this game plays from 5 to 10, but I can see how you can easily make it scale uh, for any group. Um, although I would keep it probably to a, mac uh, a minimum of 5, because uh, having the extra spy in there will help things out quite a bit. So as I was saying, you will be secretly dealt one of these cards. Now there are uh, two basic rules to remember in the resistance. Uh, one is that you can never reveal the identity of what you have under this card um, or this card that you're dealt at the beginning of the game um, at all throughout the game. Now, if I'm a spy, I can say that I'm a member of the Resistance all I want. In fact, I'm encouraged to. I can never, however, reveal the fact that I am actually a spy or that I am actually a member of the Resistance uh, because it kind of ruins the gameplay. Um, so that's, that's cardinal rule number one. We'll get into number two here in a bit. So after all, all the five cards or how many other players you have are dealt out, uh, you're going to take a look secretly. I usually just do kind of a flip up and look down, kind of like I'm looking at a poker hand. Um, reveal who you are. Then somebody in the group will say the following. Um, everybody close your eyes and look at the ground. Okay, spies, open your eyes and acknowledge one another. Now everybody close your eyes and look at the ground again. Now everybody opens your eyes. And what this allows the spies to do is find out who the other spy or spies are that are in the table. Um, so here's what you know going into it. If you look at your card and you are in fact a resistance member designated by the blue background of the card that you're dealt versus the spy's red background, the only thing that you know for sure is that you are in fact a resistance member. That's it. 
I can look to my player's left, I can look to my right, and, 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 and ask them straight up if they're a spy, and they could say absolutely not, and it turns out the entire game that they were, and they were playing you all along. Subsequently, I could be in the same position if I'm dealt a spy card. This is what makes this game so fun. Um, again, when we first played it, we played it for hours, and I've even brought it to work, and we played it at our lunch break um, for a bit, and those guys there had a blast with it too. No one that I've played this game with has not liked it so far, which is why I'm rating it so high. Um, now, how the game works. So once you know your identity, um, there will be somebody uh, chosen at random or maybe even volunteered who will get this token here. This is the team leader card. Now, the purpose of this game is, if you look at a tableau, is to uh, assign a number of players to go on these missions equal to the value that's in the middle of the card. So if you can see here, Mission 1 has a value of 2. So if I were the team leader on Mission 1, I would designate two people, it could be myself and another, it could be two random people at the table, however I want to determine that. And I would uh, give them a team token icon to say that they are being part of the team. Everybody else at the table will have a set of reject and accept tokens, or rather approve and reject tokens. Um, that they will then secretly vote on what team, or if they want to accept that team or not. Now, if you're a member of the Resistance, you're going to try your best to get on the team. It is important for you to get on the team so that way you know the mission is going to be a success. If you're a spy, you're trying to do the exact sa same thing, right? So here's where the social behavior comes in. If I'm a spy, I want to get on that team. I may throw somebody under the bus that's not a spy, or maybe even one of my spy compatriots, just so I can get on the team and try to fail that mission. Majority rules on this vote. So if the vote is passed, that team then goes in and votes on the mission, which we'll get into in a second. If the majority is rejected, the leader token passes to the next player, and then that team is uh, and then a team is picked again. Now. The Resistance has five turns on any given mission to be able to assemble a team. If it has not been assembled at five turns, the game is over and the spies win. Not just the mission, but the entire game. So this is something that I can see that has gotten close to happening with me personally, but I have not seen it yet. But I can definitely see where that's a possibility. Now, once the team has been successfully established, they will be given a set of success and fail cards. Now here's where cardinal rule number two comes in. If I'm a member of the resistance, I can only ever vote success on a mission. This is going to allow uh, my team to, be, uh, to pass success. So once the number of uh, players who are on the team have all voted, you're gonna take the tallies, uh, or take the votes, and then put them in a pile. Uh, you shuffle those votes and then reveal them, either one at a time or all at once, however you'd like to. Um, the, the mission is determined if it's a success if all cards read success. If there is one fail in the mission, that mission has been failed. Now, you play this game on a total of five missions, so you, it's basically first to three um, in the game. So if the Resistance gets a clean sweep and gets the first three missions successful, congratulations Resistance, you have won. However, if mission two was a failure, mission four was a failure, you still have two more chances to try to get that third one. So there are two ways for the spies to win this game. Either get the team to not assemble five times or sabotage three different missions. Uh, that's how you play the game. It's very, very simple. It takes place basically in three phases. Uh, the leader picks a team. Everyone votes on the team. And now if that's successful, you go into the final phase of actually voting on the mission um, if you're on that team. If that is not successful, you pass this to the next player, and then you reproduce those first two phases. Um, and that keeps going around until you haven't assembled the team for five times. Now this game is so much more than the rules. In fact, you could probably make your own resistance game with a thing of playing cards and a thing of notebook paper. Um, this is not about the components. This game is all about social interaction, and those are my favorite games when it comes to role-playing or any other type. I strongly recommend you take a look at The Resistance because it is absolutely great. And actually, if you buy this edition that I got with the red box, um, 
it comes with a built-in expansion that reduces, uh, that gives you some plot cards. And I'm actually not 100% sure on what those do, so I won't get into those too much with you. I've been having too much fun just playing the base game, uh, so I haven't really had a chance yet. So again, check out the Resistance, 9.5 out of 10. Uh, I think it's definitely a big, big hit with my group, and I think it will be with yours as well. Thanks, and game on.